Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, today I would like to start a new topic, uh, ordinary differential equations. Well, first of all, let me just mention very briefly that if there is anything in the mathematics which you are learning uh, is really used really widely uh, throughout many, many different um, subjects and disciplines, that's the differential equations. Ordinary as well as partial differential equations. Actually, partial even more than ordinary. So these will be two topics uh, which I'm going to address. Well, this one is about ordinary differential equations, and the next topic will be partial. Um, and I'm sure you actually are familiar with uh, ordinary differential equations from your um, physics, even such a simple thing as um, the uh, second Newton's law, for instance, which we all know looks like this, where A is acceleration, M is a mass, and F is a, is a force. Um, this is also differential equations, because what is acceleration? This is the second derivative of the function which describes the coordinate of the point uh, as a function of t, time. So, um, this particular lecture, let me just repeat it all the time, I'm kind of repeating this, um, is the part of the course of advanced mathematics which uh, Unizor.com is offering to um, students around the world. That's completely free, by the way. Um, and uh, it doesn't have advertising, so you don't suffer from anything uh, which disturbs your process of uh, learning. Um, and the site actually contains not only these lectures, but also very detailed notes for every lecture, and in many cases, exams. Um, if you are watching this lecture from any other source, like directly from the U U YouTube, for instance, or from any other website, you most likely don't have this um, additional uh, educational functionality. So that's why I suggest you to go to the website. Okay. First of all, let's start with definition. Now, ordinary differential equation is, first of all, its equation, which means it should be somewhere the equal sign, right? Now, the fact that this is differential equations um, actually implies that uh, derivatives of the function actually uh, participate. So, my most general form of ordinary differential equation is something like this. Function of an argument, the function which is unknown of this argument and its derivatives, maybe only the first derivative or maybe the first and the second and the third, etc. They are all participating in this equation. So this is the most general kind of uh, um, expression which describes ordinary differential equation. Now ordinary means there is only one argument. I'm t I was talking about the next topic which is partial differential equations that's when we were talking about function of more than one argument, two, three, whatever. For instance, the function of coordinate um, uh, might be actually three different arguments, x, y, and z. Right? Um, okay, so this is um, the most common representation of equation. And we will never use this type of a common representation. We will definitely use much more narrowly, narrower defined um, expressions which allow basically to be solved because obviously we are interested in equations which can be solved. Now, obviously there are equations which cannot be solved. Well, what, they people, what, 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 what do people do about this? Well, they solve it numerically using the computers and still get some solution, right? But that's not the subject of our discussion. We are talking about equations which we can actually solve. And uh, many examples will be provided and certain techniques how to solve these differential equations. So again, the purpose is to solve, to find function y of x which satisfies this particular um, equation. 
Now, let me just ex exemplify the, the simplest possible differential equation. And it's something like this. So there is some kind of a function y of x, which we have to find. And all I know about this function, that its derivative is equal to 2x. Well, obviously, we can guess the solution. The solution is this. Well, to be precise, the solution is this, where c is any real constant, real number. Because the derivative doesn't really change if we add the constant. It's very similar to integration, in a way. And, by the way, if we have an equation with one uh, uh, derivative of the first order, we will always have some kind of a constant. Because whenever we uh, find one particular solution, like x squared, then we can always add constant, and the result would be the same. Now, um, this is a guess, but not necessarily we are able to always guess that type of a thing. So how would be, how would you um, approach this particular very simple problem, pro pr problem, a little bit more mathematically, a little bit more scientifically, if you wish? So here is what one of the methods which I'm going to talk about um, tells you to do. First of all most likely uh, the first derivative would be better represented by this notation which is kind of the same right because this is just different notations for um, the derivative now whenever we are talking about this notation we're talking about two infinitesimal variables and um, the ratio of these infinitesimal variables is not some kind of an exact number, which is this. It's basically uh, the uh, limit of this ratio is this number. But at any particular moment, when we're talking about two infinitesimal variables, ratio is some kind of a number plus some kind of infinitesimal error, if you wish. So you always can consider this to be like an approximation and whenever I can write this it means that for for every x if we are talking about delta not d delta y over delta x that would not be an exact um, equality but as the um, the delta x is um, converging to zero then the ratio which we can, the, the limit of this ratio, which, 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 which we denote as this one, is equal to this. So that's kind of a understanding what is dy over dx. Now, why did I wanted to explain all this? Well, for a very simple reason. I would like to put this dx to the right and convert it to this. Again, this equality should be understood as a limit so if you put a delta instead of d here, it would be an approximation. But as delta x uh, converges to zero, then this particular equality becomes more and more precise, and the letter d means that in the limit we are in this particular category. Which implies that right now, this very much looks like lots of our examples on indefinite integration. Because if this is equal to this, then I can do indefinite integrals from both sides. And we can actually have the result, because the indefinite integral of dy would be equal to y plus some kind of a constant. Let's put it c1. And uh, integral of 2x would be x squared plus some kind of a constant, right? Well, this is any constant and this is any constant, so I basically can put, combine them together, where C is any constant. So I've just got exactly the same solution as whatever I guessed, but slightly more 
mathematical way. So what was my mathematical way? I separated dy from dx into two different sides and separated y also two different sides. So on the right side I had only function of x and dx. On the left side I had only function of y and dy. And then I can integrate it this of dy and this is by dx and got something which is resembling the function. So that's one of the um, ways you can solve certain differential equations which allow this type of things. And this methodology is a separation. So differential equations which allow this type of approach to solve them are called separable. Okay, so we talked about separable differential equations and separation is actually, I would say, more frequently occurred way to solve the equations, at least within the realm of the problems which you will be dealing in school, in physics, whatever. Okay, now, let's make some examples. Example number one, I have the following equation, x squared times y derivative is equal to y. Well, obviously this can be separated, right? How? dy by dx uh, is equal to y over x squared, right? x squared to here. Or I can separate dy by, d by y is equal to dx by x squared, right? Now I can integrate both sides. Now what is integral of logarithm y? Now um, in, in theory it's logarithm of absolute value of y, but let's just restrict ourselves. That would be much easier for educational purposes. So we consider that we're talking about function which is only um, allowed to have integer um, uh, positive values all right so we can divide by x square you see that's the problem I mean whenever you go into like idea of how to solve this is basically the idea if you're talking about much more uh, again mathematically rigorous way you really have to think about can I divide by x square can x be equal to zero etc so this is uh, I would say more on the idea side and that's okay for now um, so uh, I will use the simplest methodology possible so the integral from 1 over y is equal to logarithm y right because the derivative from logarithm y is 1 over y and derivative plus some kind of a constant c1 and derivative um, uh, of which function gives me 1 over x squared well, 1 over x gives me minus 1 over x squared as a derivative, right? So I have to put minus 1 over x, and derivative of this would be 1 over x squared. So I have integrated plus c2, which we can rewrite as logarithm y is, y is equal to minus 1 over x plus some kind of a free constant c. Now this is, again, any constant. Um, Again, what I will do is I will make a little simplification now. And from this, if I will raise e to the power of left and the right, e to the power logarithm y would be y. So it's equal to e to the power of minus 1 over x plus c. Or e to the power of 1 minus x times e to the power of c, right? And this is again a constant. So I can always say that it's equal to some kind of a constant. I'll use the same c, but it's di different than c. Uh, e to the power of 1 minus x. So this is what came to me, came to basically as, as a solution to this. Well, let's try to check it out. Um, y uh, derivative is equal to, this is a constant, times derivative of exponent is this times derivative of internal inner function right it's the composition it's a chain 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 rule right so derivative of minus 1 over x 
it's 1 over x square right now this is the same y right so if we will put x square here we will get this so it checks again I did not pay a lot of attention what if, if x is equal to 0 etc obviously there are certain um, I would say more rigid considerations uh, but as a general idea of how to approach this particular um, um, differential equations are presented and by the way uh, integration has been involved obviously right so in many cases to solve differential equation people are using the word to integrate uh, differential equation which means basically to solve since integration becomes the major tool of solving. Okay, next example. Tangent x con times y derivative equals to y square. Now, again, this is a kind of a separable differential equation and here is how so y derivative is dy by dx um, it's equal to y times now uh, tangent is sine over cosine if I will move it to the right it will be cosine divided by sine right now y can be moved here dx can be moved there so I will have dy divided by y square equals cosine x dx divided by sine sine of dx. So now I'm integrating. Now I have separately function of y and function of uh, x. Here I will have minus 1 over y because the derivative of this is equal to that. And... Um, this is kind of easy because what is cosine x dx? It's basically d of sine x divided by sine x, right? So the solution to this would be logarithm of sine of x. Again, some kind of a free constant is always present. So that's what I've got here. And to get the result, I have to flip this thing. So it will be 1 over minus logarithm sine of x plus c. Or again, um, we can always consider that this is not just a constant c. We can always replace c with the logarithm of c. Um, again, forgetting for a while that in this particular case c is any constant, that if I will put logarithm of c, it would be the, uh, the positive only. And if this is a logarithm c, um, I can say that this would be minus logarithm of c times sine of x. Right? Because logarithm of product is equal to sum of two logarithms, logarithm c and logarithm of sinus, and minus is here. So that's the final solution. Again, I kind of shortcut a little bit all these negative positive verifications. I just did it very, very, very um, briefly, idea oriented. And let's just check if I will take y derivative would be what? First of all, it's 1 over something. It's minus 1 over something. So it would be 1 over logarithm square of c times sine of x times inner function. Inner function is logarithm. inner function is logarithm so the derivative would be 1 over so 1 over 
c sine of x and derivative of inner function would be c cosine of x am I right? Uh, I don't know <laughs> well c is cancelling that's fine that's okay now um, now this is y square right if this is y this is y square and this cosine over sine um, if I will transfer it this way to the left I will have sine of x divided by cosine of x y and it's equal to y square and this is the tangent alright so it checks so we should not really forget all these three constants any constants which are supposed to be added during the process of integration but now that means that we have an infinite number of solutions right um, so going back to the first example first example was this and the solution was c times e to the power equal 1 minus x so it's infinite number of solutions because the c is any constant right and all of them satisfy this equation so does it mean that we cannot really find a re real solution well no it means that the real solution is infinite number of solutions that's fine however if we are interested in a particular solution so this is a general solution and we are interested in a particular solution we have to define this constant c using something else outside of this ordinary differential equation well for instance we can actually say okay from certain knowledge which we know we know that this function y of x if x is equal to 1 then the function would be equal to let's say 1 as well so this is an initial condition so not only we know the differential equation which basically defines the relationship between x and y we also know that at certain point function gets certain value for example you can have um, the differential equation like for instance uh, the second law of Newton uh, and it actually defines the second derivative now if you will integrate it if you will really solve it to find the function x as a function of t um, you will not be able to do it unless you know where exactly this, uh, the, uh, the movement started at what particular point on the coordinate axis uh, x-axis it, it started and at what initial speed it started because unless you know the initial speed and the initial position your law of movement the Newton's second law does not really give you exactly the coordinate at certain time in the future you really have to know these two additional parameters because if you for instance shift your beginning point from 0 let's say to 10 then obviously all other coordinates will be shifted by 10 so you have to know the initial position and simultaneously since the second law of Newton is, involves the second derivative so you have to know the first derivative initial um, value so initial values are important if you want to have an exact particular solution to uh, your equation now in this case this is an in initial condition which might must be satisfied well let's just find the c from this all right so what will be 1 equals to c times e to the power of minus 1 
e to the power of minus 1 is actually 1 over e right so c is equal to e and my function and this is a particular solution which satisfies these initial conditions is e to the power e to the 1 over x or you can add e to the power 1 minus 1x right so this is a particular solution which satisfies not only this but also this so now we know the difference between general solution and particular solution which satisfies certain initial parameters and we need only if we have only one constant we also we obviously need only one parameter if we had the second derivative involved we would need two but that's a little bit further for another lecture. Now let me talk about the second. So the second um, I had tangent x times y derivative equals to y square. And our solution was y is equal to minus 1 over logarithm of c times sine of x okay now what kind of initial condition might be well just for example if uh, x is equal to pi over 2 my function should be equal to 1 okay using this let's try to determine c so the function is equal to 1, so 1 is equal to minus 1 over logarithm of sine of pi over 2 is 1, so it's c. So from this, logarithm c is equal to minus 1, right? From this, c is equal to 1 over i all right because logarithm of 1 over i is minus 1 so i can put it here and now i have a particular solution which satisfies our condition which is y is equal to minus 1 over logarithm of sine of x divided by e. Now if x is equal to pi over 2, this is 1, 1 over e is 1 over e, logarithm of 1 over e is minus 1, minus 1 minus 1, so we will get 1 here. So that's a particular solution which satisfies our initial condition. So what's important in this particular case is we had an ordinary differential equation ordinary means from one argument in this case we are using x and the function y of x uh, the first derivative is participating in the equation and the equation is separable so we both in both our examples we were using separation y to the left x to the right and then we integrated them and then whenever we got the general solution we had some constant involved which is kind of any number and to determine this any number we need additional uh, initial conditions on the function which we are looking for um, and that actually is defined like for instance if x is equal to something then y is supposed to be equal to something that's one of the form of initial condition and we were able to determine c in that particular case um, I suggested to read the notes for this particular lecture on unisor.com and uh, then we will continue with uh, other things. We will um, describe uh, what kind of types of uh, um, differential equations you might actually meet. There are not too many actually and how to solve them. Other than that, that's it. Thank you very much and good luck.